Before we get started, today's video is brought to you by Galmon. This one's tiny. Galmon reached out to me and said, hey, we've worked with you in the past with some of our bigger models. Uh, we want to try to reach out to artists that are just getting started, uh, kids that want to learn how to use tablets, or just uh, an artist that needs a backup one just in case you never know. Uh, so they gave me the, let me look up the name, Galmon S620 battery free graphic tablet. Yeet. And this here, what it looks like, pretty tiny, but very convenient. You can like, you know, put it in your drawer for next time. It's got a 6.5 inches of working area for your PC. These little buttons here are four shortcut keys that you can program to do whatever you want, like Control Z, Control Z. Control Z! You know the feeling. A passive pen that doesn't have to be charged up, so it is battery free. You can use it specifically for this device, but uh, you won't have to charge it, unlike their previous ones way back when. I remember those. And it is compatible with Windows, Mac, and Android OS. And while I have showcased their bigger ones and the screen tablets in the past, again, this one is for uh, artists that just, they've never tried a tablet before and they want to experiment with it. For kids that just, they want to play with a tablet, but they're not too sure if they'll like it or not. Because this thing, for US dollars, it's a little over 30 bucks. Uh, Australian's a little over 40 bucks. So it's not bad for, for you know, baby's first tablet. That's what I like to call it, it's my little nickname for it. Baby's first tablet. So if you're interested, just click on the links down below. Check out the Galmon, I keep calling it Galmon 6 -Zilla. The Galmon S620. It is really affordable. Again, it's for anyone that's starting tablets for the first time. If you just want an extra one in case something happens to your big one. Or if you have a kid, they want a tablet for drawing on the computer. And you don't know if, you know, if they're gonna like play with it for five minutes and then put it to the side. You, you know those kids. You know those kids. So thank you to Galma for sponsoring today's video and on to the video. Ah! appropriate shirt for me to be wearing today. Hello, you two. Well, hey there, guys. I haven't uploaded anything ever since the High Guardian Spice review. Just taking a little break here and there, and also I, I had the audacity to uh, work more hours at my other job and actually get a promotion. The audacity. Yes, I did get a promotion at my job. Uh, does require a lot more hours, especially nowadays since it's the summer holidays, you know, with Christmas rolling around because I'm in Australia. Reminder, I married an Aussie. I love those comments that are like, you're anime America, but why are you in Australia? I married an Aussie, okay? I moved here. I'm still anime America. But yeah, it's the summer holidays here and they take all of January off and I think uh, some of them have started uh, 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 getting off early around this time of year. So I'm at my other job open every day. I'm actually supposed to go in tonight uh, for a small night shift working baby but even i wanted to give my two cents on the situation with totally not mark how toei just abused their power to remove 150 of his videos and uh to give a little insight over what i had to go through when it came to toei and uh there's a few other companies so this is just a little reminder that corporate japan will not stop here and uh i have a feeling that a few other companies will try to get in on this even though by law we are protected by fair use some companies will still insist that uh, fair use doesn't exist what a world we live in even i'm pulling up an article from cbr.com dragon ball one piece studio under fire for pulling youtube reviews it's a bunch of people talking about this toy animation is facing criticism after youtuber totally not mark claims the animation studio used copyright claims to take 150 of his videos. Toy Animation, the studio behind the anime adaptations of Dragon Ball, One Piece, and Sailor Moon, is facing heated criticism from the anime fan community after the company apparently used copyright claims to force the removal of 150 of YouTuber Totally Not Mark. My life has been unfairly ripped away from me, Totally Not Mark said in a new video. According to Mark, who 
has over half a million subscribers to his channel, Toei Animation has spent the last few days systematically getting most of his videos blocked from the site through the use of copyright claims. Mark is known for his manga reviews, which often use the clips from each series and anime adaptation. All the videos removed were related to Dragon Ball or One Piece, though some of the videos did not include any clips from the anime and were simply drawing tutorials. The YouTuber says he supports his family and several full-time employees through income generated by his channel. So yeah, Toei Animation just pulled a dick move. No, I will not pardon my own French. And I've had to fight Toei in the past. Like, I've actually mentioned it on Twitter that Toei took down a few of my videos. This is like a while ago. This is not like a recent thing, but I've had my share of bullcrap from Toei because again, corporate Japan does not care about fair use. And anytime you use their footage, even in screenshots, whether it's for fair use, reviewing purposes, parody, any sort of that, uh, they totally believe it is stealing their property. So if anything, they're just abusing the copyright system without even watching the video. They just see the name of their product and be like, whoop, 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 they're stealing, they're stealing copyright claim. You don't even watch the video. It's abuse of your power. Like they even took down my uh, ranking video where I took every single Sailor Scout from the original Sailor Moon and Sailor Moon Crystal and ranked them in a tier ranking video. And I included a few video clips here and there just reviewing each girl. And I used the clips in edited cuts to demonstrate my points, which is, it, it fits under fair use when it comes to reviewing property. So it is me ranking them, but also going over my reasons and just reviewing each of the girls. I actually did fight that claim because what they did was they, they, uh, re they pretty much blocked my video and said it was a copyright claim. I fought it and they said, no, 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 this still meets uh, copyright abuse and we're taking down your video. We're, we're just blocking your video. And to which I said, no, I'm going to appeal this decision. This is not uh, abusing copyright. You guys are abusing copyright. And then they slapped me with a, a channel strike, like a copyright channel strike, and threatened to take down my video within 30 days, to which then they had 14 days to fight my last appeal. This is like three stages of bullcrap. The majority of the time when I had to fight copyright for any other reason, outside of J corporate Japan, I usually had to do the two-step thing. And I remember, if you guys remember Yam and Demel, remember that name? <laughs> The Italian distribution company that just kept claiming all of my videos, every single one of them, for using like small snippets of like anime that they had like distribution rights for in Italy. They're gone now, thank God. But it was just a two step process and they took 30 days per process. So this was 60 days, a little over two months of dealing with this crap. YouTube, what is your problem? Like they would copyright, they would copyright claim my video and take all of the revenue. To which then I would say, no, 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 this does actually meet fair use. I know my rights, and they would take thirty days. To which then they would say, no, 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 on the last day, on the last day, they said, no, 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 this actually does meet the requirements, and uh, we're still gonna take your money. And to which I fought that was an appeal, and it took another thirty days. To which then that that was when YouTube was all like, okay, now we can release your video. Thank God YouTube actually changed the copyright system where like now you have to like, get the... remember where's the fair use? So it's like now if you do file the claim, the revenue that that video makes is on standby. It's like, it's in purgatory and whoever wins the copyright fight, it goes back to that person. But that was such BS back in those days with Yam and Demo because I've made like so many top 10 videos like that month when I made uh, three top 10 videos about anime weapons, like the most iconic ones, the most uh, powerful ones, and the weirdest ones, I think, like the weirdest weapons in anime. Um, I actually, if I remember right, I think one of them is still blocked, so I gotta work on that. I still got a few more copyright claims, none of them from Toei, but I still got a few more that I gotta fight off for like other companies, so I'm dealing with this like one by one. But... That was such a nightmare to get through, and I'm glad that like YouTube changed it. So now Yam and Demo doesn't bug me anymore. The very moment second YouTube changed that, Yam and Demo stopped claiming me. Like, wow. 
you could tell that like these distribution companies were just taking advantage of creators. I think it got to a point where like if YouTube didn't change anything, I would have just blocked the video. I would have just unlisted them, being all like, no, you're not. We're gonna fight this claim, but if you're gonna take 60 days to get over this, no one's gonna watch the video. But around that time, that was when YouTube changed everything. So Yam and Dem will stop bugging me. Clear proof that distribution companies took advantage of YouTube creators and the copyright, you know, loopholes so they could take all of the money. Because YouTube's right. When a video gets released and that's when all of the page views come in, that's your time to strike. That is your time to like put the copyright claim in, reap in the benefits, and then by the time the copyright is clear, everyone's already watched the video, so they're not gonna watch it again. Unless you love me very much. Some of you do. <laughs> love you, love you. But Japan was never like that. Every time I would get a copyright claim from Japan when it came to animation, not with music, because King Records, whenever I play an anime opening, they would copyright strike the video and just demonetize it but they were still allowed to play and they were just like asking me to like mute the segment i'm like no i'm using this for reviewing purposes they, they did that with my uh sailor moon video my, my poor sailor moon video old versus new on sailor moon super s and uh eternal uh king records claimed that for using the intro to sailor moon crystal and then once i got that copyright cleared toei came in and blocked the whole video Ugh. But I never faced anything like what Totally Not Mark faced, where in less than 24 hours, 150 videos were removed by Toei because they believed it was uh, infringing on their rights. When no, if you actually watch these videos, you're actually infringing on your rights. You, you are abusing your power, stepping on another person for just reviewing your product. But Japan does not believe in fair use. So that makes anime YouTubers like myself, their lives a little bit more difficult when we talk about their products. The only companies I've ever had to face when it comes to this kind of crap is Toei and Sony. And again, with Sony, it's just mostly for the music. So, but pretty much with the animation, it's Toei. And I got Sailor March Madness. I have my old versus new of Sailor Moon versus Sailor Moon Crystal. Um, my old versus new of Super S versus Eternal. Top 10 videos where it does feature One Piece, uh, Sailor Moon, and Dragon Ball Z. So it'll be interesting to see what they do with my channel, but as far as I'm aware, Totally Not Mark is the only one. But it makes me worried about the future because if Toei can get away with this by bullying YouTubers from touching their products, then what's to stop other companies? Which is gonna make fair use a struggle, like it's part of our rights, but I just can't imagine having all those copyright strikes in one day and you just struggling to fight it when you're just a small YouTuber just doing your best to talk about the thing that you love and maybe criticize it a little bit, just give a little bit of criticism because you love it that much. Which is gonna be interesting when I talk about Cowboy Bebop from Netflix next. You know it's coming. Yeah. It's a scary time to live in. You would think that, like, with most other animation studios who don't give a shit, Toei wouldn't give a shit. Because at the very least, like, we're talking about your products for, for free. It's free advertisement, but they don't care about that. Because they got all of Japan's money and all their attention, and they got, like, their undying fanboys and girls just making it rain with yens and dollars, and as long as Toei just keeps producing Sailor Moon, Dragon Ball Z, and One Piece, they're gonna be set for life. And not to mention there's like Dragon Ball restaurants and products that are sold all throughout the world, especially in Brazil, because Brazil loves Dragon Ball. You got your One Piece show, and I think they're working on a One Piece like theme park or something. I don't know, maybe it's like a boat show or something. Uh, Sailor Moon musicals and the Sailor Moon ride at Universal Studios. Like, Toei is unstoppable. So they probably do believe they're unstoppable with this, but I just want to know, how much do you pay your animators? Just, just asking. Because the love and support that we give Toei and all the other animation studios, we want that to go to the people who, you know, spend day in and day out, hours beyond hours, sacrificing social and family time to produce the content that we love. How much are you paying them? I just want to know. 
I might, I might actually have to do some research on that. I just want to know if you're taking care of your studio or you're just like any other studio, just reaping the benefits if you're a manager and a producer and just over exhausting your employees to the brink of death. This, this is the world we live in. Very sad note to end on, but welcome to anime. Coming up next, I will be reviewing Netflix's Cowboy Bebop. And if I do have time, which I probably will not because I'm working a lot of my other job, I will do the Demon Slayer review. It may have to wait till January. Next two months, like my job is open every day because we're usually a weekend thing, but it's summer holidays. We're gonna be open every day, just uh, giving people a good time at the park. But I will keep you guys updated on Twitter. If you follow me at Anime America, uh, I will keep you updated on uh, on what videos I'm working on next. And again, I do apologize. I was really trying so hard to get the Demon Slayer review out around Halloween, but life finds a way to mess with my schedule. Yay me. So thank you all so much for watching. More awesome videos will be on the way, so stay tuned, Anime America. Bye-bye. Hey there, if you like what we do on this channel, be sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. If you wish to support us financially, we do have a Patreon page with numerous rewards to fit your budget. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, at Anime America, and be sure to check out our other channel, Pop Spectrum. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned, Anime America.